Anyway, uh, my first guest tonight, ladies and gentlemen, really knows about pleasure and pain. She's a singer, she's a songwriter, she's an actress, she's also an Australian rock icon. Ladies and gentlemen, Chrissy Ampler! I like silly. Do you? Mm. Well, well you've come silly. to the right place. <laughs> Your book, mm. Pleasure and Pain, My Life, I've read it, it's fantastic. Really? It is. It really, I mean, you basically live the life of sex, drugs, rock and roll, according to your book. And so, you know, was your mum ever really worried about you? Do you know, I just, I just got down to Geelong, because I'm from Geelong, yeah. and I sat with her. She hadn't read the book. So I gave the book to her last Friday. She, I went into the bedroom, and she started reading it. And I go, where are you up to now? You know, and I just sat on the bed, right? Yeah. And then she was quiet and read and she said, Oh, I didn't know you took drugs. You're kidding me. I know. I'm sorry to say this in front of your mother. That's Who okay. Mum can take this, Mum down there. Nice girl. Yeah. Anyway, so she said, I had no idea about anything, obviously. I, you know, and then at the end she said, Well, it's made you a better person. Yeah. I went, you know, I kept her away from everything and I just went on, got on with it and I... If, I'd, if she had any idea, then she would have worried about me all the time. Yeah. And I didn't want that. And it's been my journey, right? Yeah. It's nothing it's to do with journey. her. It's my journey. It's nothing is. to do with her. So. But you did protect her. I did protect her. And then she hasn't really found out about all the things I've got up until, until last weekend. When she read the book. When she read the book. Pleasure and pain, my life. <clears throat> yeah. What about your dad? Well, Dad passed away. Oh, so he hasn't read the book, obviously. So he hasn't read the book. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about so, that. Uh, uh, do you want me to do this? Yeah, please, you? yeah. Mm. I noticed that in the book you're actually quite... When, when the band members were sick, you used to, um, like, in the divine... Oh, that's nice. You are very nurturing, aren't you? Sometimes. Yeah. If I like a person. Do you? No, but you were quite nurturing of your band members when they were ill and stuff. You were, you, being, we were all nurturing of each other, I think. Yeah. And, you know, we sort of put all... It's like a, a really dysfunctional family being in, in our band. Yeah. Did you find it hard to live up to the image as well at times, that, in real life? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> no? Vince Lovegrove, who was our manager, always used to sort of tell me more. And, and if, I, if I didn't do it... If I did a sort of a tame show, he'd always say that was cabaret, and that was the worst thing. Yeah. That... Oh, damn, I used to be in a cabaret band. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. But that was the worst thing you could say to me, because I wanted to be a rock and roll singer. It had yeah. to be real. Everything had to be real. Is it an urban myth, or is it real, that you used to take a piss on stage? Maybe. I don't know. People see me do all sorts of things. I, yeah. You know, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I was so carried away. and I In the pretty... moment. And it just in the happened. moment, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't have to keep talking I didn't like... I didn't like... <laughs> It's making you uncomfortable, but... Um... No, it's not. It's making you feel uncomfortable. No, not really. I can see you. Do you want me to... No, 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 I'm... No, it's all right. <laughs> That's a natural function. I mean, we all do it. I mean, I could have one right now, really. I'm... <laughs> Everybody's seen my penis in Australia anyway, I mean, because I've done a lot of nudity on stage. Have you ever been nude on stage? Before the Divinals, you actually, you, you did a show where you it had to It was the do only nude... thing I could get into. I auditioned for everything, and the only show I could get into was a nude musical. Yeah. It was a sex comedy. Yeah, I gathered that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was Linda Lips, the porn queen. Yeah. yeah. And I would come out in this little corset, like a little tight yeah. thing, just all that's all I had on. Yeah. And I had rollers in my pubic hairs. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very unusual. And show. that was my big. <laughs> <laughs> that was my big, my big um, break. Yeah. And a lot came out of that. Right. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, and... No, but it, it was, you know, it was, it was funny. And, um... Yeah, it's an unusual interview, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really enjoying it! <laughs> it's very, very cathartic, very releasing being nude on stage. Yeah, I find that. Uh, there's no obvious place to put a microphone. What did you up. do when you were nude? Look at the expression on your mother. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and my mother was very supportive. Yeah. She knew about that. What? That I did a nude musical. Did she come to the show? Oh. She loved it? Oh. Yeah. She was in the front row in stitches. Who were your idols? Um, I ha Aretha Franklin. 
Um, my cousin, Little Patty, was my cousin growing That's up. That's right, your cousin. My big yeah. cousin. I mean, you're very, you, you, your performance style was very different from Little Patty's. But she was from a totally different era for me. I mean, you know, as she says, it doesn't matter how famous you were, a man was always headlining. And, you know, she, even if she was, she was selling more records, but she would be always second to the bill to a, a man. Yeah. So you were quite shy to, to begin with when, um, in reading the book, you, you were um, you used to hang back near the drummer and well, hide behind your know. fringe before you actually discovered your, your the costume. Sona, it was funny. I felt kind of really vulnerable. And, and it wasn't until I put on the school uniform that I became, uh, found my character. But when, once I started wearing the school uniform, that's when it all kind of came together. And you'd go crowd surfing and everything wearing oh, this yeah. hair. Yeah. Diving into the audience. And wasn't that a little bit dangerous? Probably, yeah. but it was all dangerous. Yeah, and and that was also, I think, what a lot of the magic was with those performances and things. You never knew what was going to happen. And you were around at a real breakout of pub rock in Australia. Oh, it was like a midnight oil, time. in excess, mental as anything. Angels. Angels. We supported the angels. Rose but, tattoo. Yes. But there was a fair bit of competition between the Divinos and the other bands. Very competitive. We were all competitive with yeah. each other. I mean, you, you and I was particularly competitive because. I didn't want to be pushed aside being the only girl. Yeah. So that, you know, it, it, I also was, I, I think I was pretty feisty. <laughs> yeah. Do you have to be selfish to succeed in rock and roll? I think so. Because it's so tough and everybody will pull you each which way for their own ends and their own agenda and their own, their own means. And I think you've got to really be strong and very true to your own vision or else you, you just get walked over. In America, they had a problem with your teeth. Mm -hmm. that you had buck teeth in all America, because I've got wiggle these babies here. You know? <laughs> well, it's like a rickety old fence there, keeping in sheep, you know. That, uh, I mean, I love the, the teeth that's part of you, but uh, did they try and make you change your teeth? Yes, I, was, I had braces put on. Well, no, the record company said I wasn't having hits um, because we weren't having hits because I had buck teeth. <laughs> <laughs> It was always about, you know, it was always That seems so fault. obvious, now you say it. it was, so then uh, they said, we'll pay for braces. So then they put the braces on. And then for some reason they stopped paying for it. So I went, oh. You took the and braces And then the off. teeth, teeth found, <laughs> boing, boing, straight, boing out. straight out again. <laughs> <laughs> and then it bounced out again. Yeah. But it was, it's part of my sound too, you know, the way I'm, I make... Words and sounds. Sounds, yes, yeah. And, uh -huh. and it's like, I just got sounds really like toothy. And it's part Mr. of the... Mr. Dollar C? <laughs> Hey, it's good as improving my voice talking like this. I'm sorry, I'm not mocking you. I just, I know you said you like silly. I do like silly. I'm doing silly, pretty. <laughs> it's not working either. <laughs> anyway, it's a great book, Pleasure and Pain, My Life, Chrissy Amphlett. Thank you very much. Chrissy Amphlett! <laughs>